Hi everyone and welcome to the Dental Podcast from Denver. My name is Tom and I'm your host today and I'm pleased to announce that we are today talking about practical private dentistry, which is our next two events that we're going to be running virtually. So I'm joined by three fantastic guests today. I've got Alan Tumbleson, Kathy Barr and Lewis McKenzie. First of all, I'm just going to ask you guys to introduce yourselves for anyone that might not be familiar with who you are and what you do. Hi Tom, thanks very much. My name's Lewis McKenzie and I'm the Head Dental Officer at Denplan. And I'm Kathy Marr. I'm one of the uh, business development managers at Denplan. And I am Alan Tomlinson, and I am one of Kathy's colleagues, so a business development manager here at Denplan. So, could you tell all the listeners what the actual the, what the event's going to be about? Yeah, it, it's um it's a short webinar. We've only got an hour because we know it's at the end of a working day for everybody. Um, but really, to focus on a practical guide to private dentistry. So. We've got, we're starting off the evening really with uh, Dr. Lewis McKenzie talking about sort of the private mindset of a dentist um, and exploring really um, the sort of tips to moving into private clinical dentistry. Um, Cause I know a lot of um, dentists have questions about that, how to make that move, that step change as they see it from NHS clinical dentistry to pi- private dentistry. So he will be providing sort of his top 10 tips as he calls them and then I'm going to be interviewing um, a dentist who's actually made the move from um, NHS dentistry to private dentistry and really giving everybody an opportunity to ask him questions about why he did it what the experience was like um, and how he's finding life now so um, it's really from the horse's mouth then from one of one of their own peers who will be talking through his experience and then we've got one of our trainers who's going to be focusing on the importance of patient communication um, and the support um, that we can give practices with that important topic. And then um, one of my colleagues, Alan, will be rounding off the night talking about the support, the extensive support that we offer um, as a business to practices making this move and really focusing on our latest proposition called um, Demplan Plus um, and all the benefits that go with that to help practices to really make that move successfully from NHS dentistry to private dentistry. So what we really wanted to do uh, for the evening was sort of explore um, taking a dentist, a practical guide to going private really from the NHS. They will be listening to Lewis, who's going to talk to us. Um, I don't actually know what Lewis is really talking about. Maybe tell us what Lewis is talking about. <laughs> I can help you out there, Kathy. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, we've got we've got a nice uh, uh, a nice packed program. Uh, I'm going to be kicking things off with uh, uh, why to go private in the first place. Um, Kathy, um, with special guest Adam, are going to talk about the, the sort of private journey. Um, and uh, Courtney's joining us to talk about how to communicate with patients about the private uh, transition. Uh, and then Alan will fill in the fill in the uh, any any blanks on a step by step guide to your transition from the NHS into into the world of private dentistry, either partially or an entire um, transition. So one of the, you said that there's a private revolution taking place in dentistry at the moment. And would you say that's correct? And if so, why would you say that? Well, the um, the private dentistry revolution actually started back in the 1980s uh, and that, that's when Demplan was formed back in uh, back in 86 in response to that the uh, first big wave of dentists leaving the NHS uh, either fully or, uh, or or partially was in 1990 with the first ever contracts uh, imposed in England Scotland Wales and, and Northern Ireland and so this is the first time that uh, dentists uh, realised that Happy with what uh, what was being placed in front of them, um, and so the first big exodus was in the nineties. Uh, th- this was then followed in two thousand and six with the introduction of the UDA system uh, in England and Wales, but at the same time, lots of uh, uh, dentists in um, in Scotland and Northern Ireland left as well. Uh, so, so that was sort of takes us up to sort of now, where from a sort of a, an economic point of view, 60% of all high street dentistry is, is private already. So with all the changes that have gone on in the run-up to the pandemic, and obviously with the, the dramatic impact that it's had on the profession, 
uh, the, 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 the prospective contract reforms in all the different uh, countries uh, may herald the, the third and, and possibly even the biggest wave of, of dentists uh, moving away from the NHS uh, uh, to, to mixed practice or to entirely uh, private practice. So, um, so if history does repeat itself um, next year and possibly the, the year after, could see possibly the most significant growth in the private sector that there's ever been. So why is it that you think that dentists should consider private dentistry? Oh, it's a good question, Tom. And we'll be covering this in detail on the, on the events, of course. Uh, but um, going back to when DEMPLAN was formed, it, it was formed with three main goals, which are exactly the same today. The first was to, uh, for, for dentists to get control of their professional lives. Um, the second was to uh, create an environment where quality dentistry is, uh, is, is at the forefront. And the third was to align the patient's wishes with the dentist's wishes uh, to, to prevent disease and, and, and sort of minimally invasive uh, maintenance of patients. So a, a kind of a, a switch from, uh, you know, getting paid to actually uh, prevent disease rather than sort of uh, rely on sort of activity-based uh, targets, which, which is unfortunate, uh, which is the way the, the systems that we have at, at the moment. Talking to dentists, have, as I have done for, you know, probably done, well, I have done over a thousand hands-on courses and lectures uh, around the country. So I've talked to li literally thousands, probably tens of thousands of, um, uh, of colleagues. Uh, so we're going to go through the, you know, all of the reasons uh, that, um, that are, that are, that are uh, proposed for why people like um, uh, private dentistry. Um, and uh, and on the flip side, why they sometimes don't like the environment of working in the, the NHS. But say so we'll go through it in detail on the evening. But it's sort of the, the main number one recurring theme is time. Private dentistry just gives you that time in practice. It gives you the right life work balance uh, to to create the career that's right for yourself um, and practice the dentistry that we all learnt at, uh, at dental school in uh, in an unrestricted environment um, so uh, I say we'll, we'll provide a step-by-step a -step guide to 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 why people um, want to leave the NHS. So you briefly touched earlier on the speakers at the event and could you, you shine a little bit more light on some of our speakers and uh, and some of their backgrounds? Well I, I'm going to be interviewing um, one of our Denplan members, um, a dentist from Ipswich who um, actually made the move away from NHS dentistry himself and I'm going to be interviewing him asking him why he did it how he found it why he chose Demplan to make that move and really what um, his practicing life is like now um, so rather than it just be about us who work for Demplan and um, talking to everybody about why we believe we're the best plan provider to make this change with we're going to be asking one of our members um, for his experience and people will have an opportunity to ask him questions as well. So we want the evening to be interactive um, and live so that anyone who is listening who has particular questions uh, for Dr. Hunter, they can come on um, and email in, or email in. They can post questions um, straight to him that I'll be more than happy to ask him. My bits will be divided into four sections, and uh, so that the first thing will be sort of uh, sort of why people want to change, as I mentioned before, the mindset that you need when you're doing the uh, the transition to to partial or complete private dentistry, um, the uh, the support that you can get from Demplan, um, Kathy and Alan will be going through that in detail. Uh, and then I'll be providing my top 10 tips, clinical tips for, for, for private dentistry, uh, equipment, materials and uh, little bits and pieces uh, that will help ease that transition and um, uh, uh, towards, you know, enjoyable dentistry uh, every single day of your professional lives. And uh, I'll be following up this interview with Adam Hunter with a general overview of our Demplan Plus proposition, what it entails, what it offers clients, as well as just covering off some of the highlights of support that practices can expect from our uh, business development consultants and them as, as a whole. Fair.
Excellent. So going slightly a bit back about the uh, when we sort of talk about moving to private, some of those issues that might people that might want to address is about how to communicate that with the patient. Is that is that something that we're going to be covering over the event? Or yes, definitely, Tom. Um, it's really really important that um, we help and support the whole practice team in talking to the patients. Um, and one question we get asked a lot is what support is there for my team, my receptionist, they're already busy. Um, you know, how, how can you help them? And we've got an awful lot of experience now. As Lewis said, you know, Demplan was found by dentists in um, the late 1980s. And even at that time, people wanted help and support with talking to patients and finding the right way and the best way for their practice. And every practice is unique. And every dentist um, obviously is unique. So there isn't a one script that fits everybody, but we will be exploring on the evening, you know, giving some top tips, um, some sort of do's and don'ts. Um, but as Alan said, the, the practice support team that we have who work with practices will be able to tailor that sort of communication message for patients and for practices. So there's an awful lot of support on hand to help um, dentists and their teams with communicating with patients. Oh, great. So obviously CPD is a big thing for a lot of people. Is, is this an event that's going to be uh, benefiting from any CPD that we know? Yeah, good, good question, Tom. Um, yes, CPD is available for this event. So um, all those that log on and register with us will be getting CPD for the evening. Fabulous. And uh, just speaking from some of the experience that I've done from a digital experience before, I can only say how easy it is to actually uh, get your CPD once these, once these events have been sort of finished. So from a registration perspective, it's as simple as logging on and just going online. So you, you'll be able to see that within any of our social media posts, within uh, the, the, the link in our bio from our Instagram thing, details in the description in our YouTube channel. So wherever you get this, you should be able to find a link that's readily available. But um, also find it via our sort of fantastic platform that we use via our website. But if our practices want to find out more, so how can we, how, where would be the best place for them to find out? Um, they can easily go onto our Demplan website. So if they go um, onto the Demplan website, they can log into the dentist section and look on the events and training section where there'll be more information. We also have NHS Hub that um, if they've got any particular questions about sort of the NHS transition experience before the event, they could go and have a look on, on the website. There's an awful lot of information and some testimonials as well from other dentists who've made the move. So there's quite a lot of um, information on the website. Oh, fantastic. So for anyone that might not be familiar, could one of you explain what and who Demplan are? Yeah, good, good question, Tom. Um, Demplan were formed in 1986 by two dentists. They've been a, an integral part of the dental industry ever since. Um, and we've grown to be the experts in the dental plan business. We are the original uh, plan provider um, and, and ultimately have become experts in moving practices from NHS provision to private dentistry. But also for patients, um, what we've done is we've made it affordable for them to choose private dentistry um, within their practices through their own, through taking up their own bespoke dental plan payment plan. Um, we, have a, we have an extensive range of business development consultants who look after practices throughout the country, um, both helping them to transition from the NHS, but also if they currently have dental plan patients, really just helping them out to achieve their aspirational goals on getting their, their dental plan lists to a level that, that they feel comfortable with. So obviously we've got these two fantastic events coming up, but who would we really say that they're most suitable for? Evening on the 25th and 26th um, are perfect really for non dem plan members, um, new dentists to the profession, uh, associates, and even any dem plan members who have maybe practices with up to 250 dem plan patients who want to grow their dem plan numbers or ideally maybe want to transition from the NHS. Brilliant. So thanks everyone for joining us today. We're going to be going live on Tuesday the 25th and Wednesday the 26th. 
And don't forget, you can access that via our social media channels, via our website at www.denplan.co.uk forward slash dentists forward slash events dash and dash training. Thanks again for listening. And thanks again, everyone, for joining me.